The Bible is the mark of the beast. And today I want to speak about the Holy Spirit and show you why that people don't want the Holy Spirit and everything. This is, uh, men love darkness more than they love light. In the uh, world today, most all sins and crimes and things are done after dark. That's the, the, the power of darkness, that people operate in darkness. That's why they make bar rooms so dark. They live in darkness. They like darkness. They don't want to come to the light because their deeds are evil. Now, this is a, a, a simple truth in the world today. It's so much sin, so much lies, and so much darkness. I was working on a job one time, and we was building a whole bunch of houses. It must have been building 60 or 70 houses at units. And I was running equipment. I was running bulldozers and front end loaders, back holes and things. And there's a whole bunch of men working on them. They'd be building four or five houses. They had carpenters and, and all kind of plumbers and electricians and everything out there. Must have been 60 or 70 men on the job. And a state trooper pulled in on the job with his car. And all of a sudden, everybody disappeared. I went, where, where did everybody go? You know, a construction bit, they got an ornery bunch, you know, and they got, they, they live from town to town. Well, this state trooper, he, he looked kind of funny when everybody left. And I shut down my tractor and I went over. I said, yeah, can I help you? And he said, yeah. He said, I have a, a helicopter. We have a helicopter that helps us watch the traffic and stuff. Now, we got a hangar. We built a hangar for it. And uh, I need a piece of steel, you know, that he's going to connect it to a thing that pulls the helicopter in and out of the hangar there. And I said, yeah, and I got it piece of steel and went back to work and he took off and all these guys come back, you know. <laughs> so you see today, people do not want you to know about it because they, most of them live in darkness. They live in darkness. It's, it's a, a truth. I've seen it over and over and over. And this is a, a good scripture. You need to understand this. And I want to show you something about the Holy Ghost. This is very important if you, if you love the Holy Ghost. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now, Jesus was the light of the world. And it said that in the beginning was the Spirit. And the Spirit was with God. And the Spirit was God. And the Spirit was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. Jesus, well, the Holy Ghost was in him. He's born of the Holy Ghost. And it said, this is the light that lighteth every man that comes into the world. You see, the Holy Ghost does. Now, pay attention when I tell you these things and watch a person's conversation when they're talking. This is a, a mystery, a little mystery for you. This is about the Holy Ghost. You see, you hear me say, oh, I felt like the Holy Ghost was grieved in me because the Holy Ghost lives in me. And I tell you, I say, I go out to pray because I, I let the Holy Ghost go and visit with them stars in the morning. He can talk to them. He knows what's in heaven. He came down from heaven. That's his family. He'll take us home. See, I get to be a partaker with the Holy Ghost. Now, think about when you're listening to people talk, especially Bible worshipers. Bible worshipers can't have the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost wouldn't stay in them if they caused divisions. Holy Ghost told me to be only a Christian. No, no, you don't join no group and cause a division in the body of Christ. So a Bible person cannot have the Holy Ghost. All right? <clears throat> now, think about some of these things. Listen when you hear John Hagee's Beacon or Benny Hinn or Kenneth Copeland or Joel Osteen, some of these big uh, people that's emulating Christ. They never say, you know, it grieves the Holy Ghost. They never say that. They never say it to people. They'll tell them to read their Bible now, but they'll never say resist, do not resist the Holy Ghost. They'll never say that it's because it's not in them. You can tell it the truth's not in them. When they don't refer to the Holy Ghost being in them, you see it said, Neglect not the Holy Ghost that's in you, the gift that's in you. See, I, I go out, more the Holy Ghost takes me to pray more than I take him to pray because he wants to fellowship with God and I get to partake with him. And he said, stir up the gift of God in you, Timothy. Stir up the gift of God. You near your house that say that. You know why they don't say that? Because they don't have it. And that's the truth. Watch their conversation. This is a mystery. Now, the Apostle Paul would say, the Spirit speaketh expressively. That in the latter times, you know, perilous times would come, latter days, perilous times would come. So, watch, they'll never say that. 
They'll never say, they'll read you a Bible verse. You see, they all they have is Bible. And, and the Apostle Paul named in the 15th chapter, the book of uh, Acts, they was talking about, we don't have to be circumcised and keep the law. And Paul, they wrote him a letter, and Paul said, it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. See, it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. They did things by the Holy Ghost. And they would say, quench not the Holy Ghost. Don't quench the Holy Ghost, you see. Think about these things. You quench the Holy Ghost. If I don't let the Holy Ghost say what he wants to say and tell you the plain truth, I'm quenching the Holy Ghost. And then learn to pray in the Holy Ghost. I go out and I pray and the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost will tell me you're right about that and you're wrong about it. He'll correct you and, and teach you and all. So become a partaker of the Holy Ghost, you know. Guess what? I was wrong the other day. I said, Lord, I was saying, I, I'm doing this, that, and the Holy Ghost comforted me, showed me a lot of truth. He'll comfort you and teach you. He comforted me. He taught me. He teaches me. He's always superior to me. He brings my spirit and make it be like his spirit. You see, you don't control him, make him be like you, or you still be a sinner because he transforms you and regenerates you. And he makes intercessions for you. He does what Jesus tells him to do. If Jesus tells him to do something, he'll, he'll be on to you till you get it done. Now, if there's something out of order with you, he'll, he'll pray for you. He'll make intercession for you. You don't know how to pray as you ought, but the Holy Ghost knows how to pray. And he'll be with you forever. The Holy Ghost will be with you forever. That's why you'll be in God's kingdom, because God's spirit will be in you. If you can't let God's spirit live in you here, you cannot live in the new world, because the Holy Ghost will be with us forever. He tells you that in the book of John, the 16th chapter. He tells you, he will be with us forever. You see, the Holy Ghost, Jesus was born of the Holy Ghost. Now, when you want to go somewhere or do something, he'll lead you. If you don't supposed to go there, you'll feel him holding you back. You don't supposed to go. You'll miss your transportation or something because he don't want you to go. And uh, he, he, lead, he leads you into all truth. And most of all, we're kept by the Holy Ghost. He keeps us. He will not let sin overcome us. He'll be onto us all the time. Now, another thing that's great is you receive power. You receive power to become sons of God. Remember, I was teaching you yesterday about being a son of God. You can only become a son of God with the Holy Ghost. You can't become a son of God by reading a book. So remember this. People love darkness. The reason they don't want the Holy Ghost is because they can't do what they want to do. You see, they love darkness more than they love light. And this is the condemnation. Uh, that light is coming to the world. See, that was Jesus. He is the light of the world. Men love darkness rather than, than light because their deeds were evil. And this is what's happening in the world today. They don't mention the Holy Ghost because they don't want him. He's in their way. They can't do their own will. They can't uh, go partying and reveling and banqueting. They can't have the things of the flesh because the Holy Ghost will be on you all the time. When I'm doing something wrong, boy, the Holy Ghost will be after me all day, all night, all night. You'll dream about it. You can't live if you're doing anything evil if you have the Holy Ghost in you. So watch these preachers when they're preaching. They never mention that uh, the Spirit speaketh expressively because they don't have the Spirit. So it's a little mystery. And always, I'm trying to give you a relationship with the Holy Ghost so you can relate to truth. This is what God sent us, was the Holy Ghost. And he'll make a Christian out of you, and he'll take you home to be with Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. Well, I heard about a man who saw a light
Your heart full of joy 